In this lecture, we're going to carry on with our subnetting theme. And by the end of the lecture, you will be able to carry out a variable length subnet mask design for a real world network topology. Now, it's only a small network in the example that we're going to work through, but you can apply the same things that you're going to learn here to larger networks in the real world. The slide that you see here is the same slide that you saw at the last of the at the end of the last lecture, where we explained that back in the day with early routing protocols, whenever you did subnetting, each of the subnets had to be exactly the same size. So if you had one subnet that was a slash twenty eight, for example, they all had to be a slash twenty eight. You couldn't mix and match slash twenty seven, slash twenty eight, slash twenty nine within the same larger network. But that ended up wasting a lot of addresses. So with later routing protocols, they did have support for variable length subnet masks. And now we can mix and match the size of our subnets within that greater network. And we're going to work through an example here. The things that we need to consider when we're going to do the design are how many different locations do we have in the network that are going to need subnets and how many hosts are going to be in each of those subnets. What are the IP addressing requirements for each of the different locations? So should different departments or types of hosts be in different subnets? For example, you might have one office, but within that office, maybe you've got a sales department, a research and development department and an accounting department and you want the accounting department to be secured from different departments. Well, in that case, you would definitely put it in its own separate subnet because different subnets, we have to route between them at a router. It's easy to secure them at the layer three level based on their IP address. And the, the last question here, what size is appropriate for each subnet? We don't want to waste addresses, but we want to leave some room for growth. So we need to have a bit of a balance here. Don't make it too big, we're wasting addresses, but don't make it too small that we're going to run out of addresses and I'm going to have to do a redesign later. That would just be giving ourselves a big headache. So for our example, this is our network topology diagram. We've got an organization, they've got an office in New York and a branch office in Boston. New York is their headquarters and they've got 28 hosts in the engineering department and 14 hosts in sales. In Boston, they've also got engineering and sales. They've got 28 in engineering, the same as in New York, and they've only got seven hosts in the sales department. So those are the different parts of the network that we need to apply IP addresses to, and we've been allocated the class C network of 200.15.10.0 slash 24, from our internet service provider. Another thing that we need to do is don't forget about our point-to-point -point links between the routers. They need to have connectivity between each other, so they're going to need IP addresses too. It's a point-to-point -point link, so we've just got two host IP addresses there. The outside interface on the New York router is connected to the outside interface on the Boston router. So that was our requirements. So now we need to think about how are we actually going to design this and the steps that you work through. First off, find the largest segment and allocate a suitable subnet size for it. You then create that subnet at the start of your available address space. And then that's it. You just keep working your way down. So you start off with the largest subnet. You then move to the next one, the next one, and the next one until you've allocated addresses for all of your different subnets. Now, in a real world deployment, you want to have a scalable design. So you want to have room for growth in your networking design. So let's say that I've got a subnet that has got 14 hosts on there. Well, you know that one of our subnet sizes is exactly for 14 hosts. Don't give the subnet that size because maybe in a few weeks time, a, a couple of extra people are going to join the department. And now how are you going to fix that problem? So make the subnet size big enough that it's going to be able to grow. 
Another thing is, because we're going to sequentially go from largest down to smallest, maybe we're going to have a subnet with 30 hosts there, and then another subnet with 30 hosts, and then a subnet with 14 hosts. Well, leave a spare subnet with 30 hosts in it. So don't just do two subnets of 30, do three or four subnets of 30. Because then if you do have a new department that requires up to 30 hosts later, you've got a spare subnet there waiting for it, and everything is still sequential and contiguous and logical going from largest down to smallest. Okay, so hopefully you got the point there. Don't design for what is right right now. Design for what is going to be the best fit in the future. Leave some scalability there. Leave some room for growth. So that's what you do in the real world. Don't do that in the CCNA exam. Okay, do not think about, oh, this is what I would do in the real world. This would be best practice. Do exactly what the exam question tells you to do, even if you think that would be a stupid thing to do. Okay, don't overthink things. Don't think, oh, well, but it would be better to do it this way. Do exactly black and white what the question asks you to do, and then you're going to get the question right. Okay, so for our example, we had the engineering departments in New York and Boston, and they have got 28 hosts each. And that was the, the largest subnets that we required. For our example, let's say the exam question says that the departments will not grow and we need to use the smallest subnets possible to maximize our available address space. Okay, so do not leave any room for future growth here because the question says make it optimal. Maximize the use of the address space. Okay, so that's the question. What I want you to do now is pause the video here and calculate the optimal subnet mask for the engineering departments. So no bigger than is necessary, but make sure it's at least big enough to support 28 hosts. Once you've done that, you'll be able to determine the network and broadcast addresses. Do that for both engineering departments, both New York and Boston, and figure out what the range of host addresses will be. Okay, so go on ahead and do that. Please pause the video now. When you come back in a second, I'll walk you through how to get the answer. Okay, so let's look at how to get the answer. So we've been allocated 200.15.10.0 slash 24. We've been allocated a class C. And we've got two different departments that we want two different subnets for, and they had got 28 hosts each. A slash 27 supports 30 hosts. A slash 28 is 14, so it's not big enough. We can't use that. The smallest that we can use, which is what we were asked to do, is a slash 27. Real world, you might argue that you'd prefer to use a slash 26, this is not the real world, it's an exam question. We're going to use the smallest possible, which was a slash 27. If we wrote that in dot a decimal notation, it's 255.255.255.224. Okay, so that was the first part of the question, figure out the subnet mask. The next thing we have to do is actually divide up our address space. The headquarters was in New York, so let's give them the first subnet. That's, so the network address is going to be 200.15.10.0 slash 27. And if we look at the line, we can see it's after 32. So a slash 27 is going to go up in increments of 32. So the next network address is going to be 200.15.10.32, which means that the first subnet's broadcast address is going to be one less than that. It's going to be 200.15.10.31. And that leaves addresses available for our hosts of 200.15.10.1 up to 30. Okay, so that's the engineering subnet. Next is the Boston engineering subnet. Well, the last broadcast address used was .31, so the network address we're going to be using is .32. So network address 200.15.10.32 slash 27. Again, we're still using that slash 27, where the line is after the 32. So the next network address would be dot 64. So our broadcast address must be 200.15.10.63, which is one less. And our hosts are going to be what's between the network and broadcast address. That's 200.15.10.33 up to 62. Okay, so that was the engineering departments taken care of. The next largest subnet is New York sales, which requires 14 hosts. So I want you to pause the video again here, 
calculate the optimal subnet mask for New York sales, and again, determine the network and broadcast addresses and the range of available host addresses. Okay, so stop the video now. I'll see you in a second once you've worked that out. Okay, so let's look at the answer. We need to support 14 hosts. The smallest possible subnet we can use is a slash 28. Slash 28 means we've got four bits available for host addresses. So that's 24816 minus two, that gives us the 14 hosts. 200.15.10.0 to 200.15.10.63 were already being used by the engineering department. So the network address that we'll start with here is 200.15.10.64. If we look at the line, we can see it's after the 16. So 64 plus 16 is dot AA. Take one away. Our broadcast address is going to be 200.15.10.79. And the available host addresses 200.15.10.65 to 200.15.10.78. The addresses that are between the network address and the broadcast address. Okay, that's our first three departments done. The last department was Boston Sales, which requires seven hosts. So let's do the same thing again. Calculate the optimal subnet mask, and then the network address, broadcast address, and the host addresses that we're going to use. So stop the video now, and I'll see you back with the answer. Okay, so we need to support 14 hosts. We're going to use a slash 28 again here, the same as what we did for the last department. You can use a slash 29, which is a possible mistake that some people would make because we need to support seven hosts. So they go 248, okay, that's three bits, and they'll make it a slash 29. They forgot to take away the two for the network address and the broadcast address. Okay, a slash 29 supports eight minus two, six hosts. We require seven here, so that's enough. So we're gonna use a slash 28 again, which supports 14 hosts. The last broadcast address was 200.15.10.79. So our network address will be 200.15.10.80. Again, the line is after the 16. So the next network address would be not .96, which means our broadcast address is going to be 200.15.10.95. The valid host addresses are .81 to .94. Okay, so that's it. That was our four departments, so we're done, right? No, remember we have to allocate addresses for the point-to-point -point link between the routers in Boston and New York. Another thing you would do in the real world is you would also allocate address space for your loopback addresses. Loopback addresses are used for management. They're a logical address, so there's not anything physical on the other end. So we'll usually allocate a slash 32 to our loopback addresses. Again, we'll talk about loopback addresses more in later lectures. Don't worry about them for now. I just mentioned it here for completeness. Okay, so that last subnet, the link between the New York and Boston routers. So let's do the same thing again. Pause the video, determine the optimal subnet mask and the network broadcast addresses and the host addresses that we're going to use. So pause the video and I'll see you back with the answer. Okay, so we want to support two hosts. Remember, a slash 31 or a slash 30 supports two hosts. And hopefully you remember I told you before, unless the exam explicitly tells you, if you need to support two hosts, go with a slash 30, because that's a standard that we use. It complies with all of the internet standards. So we're going to use a slash 30 here for our two hosts. We're already using up to 200.15.10.95 for our departments. So our network address will be one up from there. We're going to use 200.15.10.96. If you look at the line, it's after the four. So the network address is gonna go up in increments of four. So the next network address would be 200.15.10.100. One less than that gives us our broadcast of 200.15.10.99, which leaves the host addresses to be .97 and .98. Okay, one more thing that I want you to do. 
I want you to have a look again at the network topology diagram that you saw at the start of this lecture. You don't need to scroll back. I'm going to put it up on the next slide. Then what I want you to do is get a piece of paper and a pencil and I want you to draw the network diagram. But this time I want you to include the networking information, the different subnets that we just figured out. So draw the, make it look, here let me go on to the next slide. So make it look exactly like this with the routers and the switches. But rather than saying sales 14 hosts, I want you to say sales and then I want you to tell me the subnet that is going to be in use here. So the, the subnet and the subnet mask and slash notation. Do that for the, the four departments. Also do it for the point to point link. And another thing I want you to do is also put on the IP addresses that will be used on our router interfaces. For the router interfaces, use the first available host address in that particular subnet. Okay, so get your, your paper and pencil out. Go ahead and do that now. On the next slide, I'll show you the answer. Okay, so here we are with the answer. Remember when we did our design, we started off with the largest subnets, which was the engineering departments. So the way I would do my network diagram is I would show engineering in New York. That was 200.15.10.0 slash 27. In Boston, 200.15.10.32 slash 27. I've then got my sales department in New York, 200.15.10.64 slash 28. And sales in Boston was 200.15.10.80 slash 28. And the subnet I used for my point to point link, 200.15.10.96 slash 30. Then we're going to use the first available address as the IP address on our router interfaces. So that was dot one on the interface on the New York engineering department, dot 33 for engineering, dot 65 for New York sales, dot 81 for Boston sales, and then the point to point link, I'm using dot 97 on the left and dot 98 on the right. Okay, and this is actually, this would be an acceptable network diagram in a real world environment. This is typical for how we would draft that up. Okay, that's it. So you now know how to do a variable amp subnet mask design for a network. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands on practice with Cisco Networks for free, then you can download my 400 page CCNA lab guide, which you can see above my head right now. Also, check out the video about my CCNA course, it's the highest rated course online. Thanks.